So, you know, one of the things that I, I tech sort of as a theme throughout your article as well is, is sort of, um, uh, sort of a, I'll call it a frustration with sort of statistical testing and, and the use of, of sort of what I think of as reductionistic kinds of methodologies. And I think one of the things you argue for is, is field work and a more ethnographic kind of approach. And I'm wondering if you can kind of speak a little bit to sort of the, the, the pitfalls of, of the statistical orientation that our field seems to have uh, and what are some of the benefits of moving away from that as a sort of a model or methodology? That's a great question because it, it goes all the way back to the good fortune of having learned uh, my field in social relations where I was mm -hmm. exposed simultaneously to clinical, social, sociology, and anthropology. Mm -hmm. And that reinforced that the method should be appropriate to what you're studying. Right. And so when I got into culture research particularly, we're dealing here with a group phenomenon mm -hmm. that's semi-conscious, mm -hmm. that's available if you, if you get people thinking about it, but that is normally something we don't even think about. Mm. So when someone comes along and says, I'm going to study culture with a survey, yeah. the only thing I can conclude is they don't understand the concept. <laughs> because the notion that you're going to get at some shared semi-conscious phenomenon right. with a preset bunch of questions, right. which are going to be your own projections of what you think the culture might be, just sounds ludicrous to me. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if, if Ben Schneider says, but I want to study the climate and how people feel about their company, right. I say, great, do that with a survey because you want individual opinions about how they feel about the company. Sure. But don't call that culture. <laughs> right. That's culture climate. is yeah. something different and deeper. Right. So how do you study it? Well, I found empirically, if you're studying a group phenomenon, study it in groups. Mm -hmm. So I bring people together from an organization and teach them a little bit about the concept and say, talk about what's going on here. What are some of the things you take for granted? Mm -hmm. uh, when someone new comes in, what are the important things they have to learn? Mm -hmm. And then I very quickly discover the things that they all agree on. Mm -hmm. And if there's an outlier, that isn't part of the culture, or mm -hmm. it leads you to a subculture. So in the group, it becomes very visible. In the questionnaire, it doesn't. Mm. So I'm not against surveys and questionnaires, except when they're used to study group-level, uh, semi-conscious, deeper phenomena, which unfortunately has gone wild in this country. Mm -hmm. There must be a dozen organizations that claim that they have a culture measurement tool. Mm -hmm. And I get asked questions like, which is the best one? <laughs> none of <laughs> the which above. Which I say, none <laughs> of the above. Yeah. Not, and it, it's really economically stupid, too, because it right. costs you a great deal more mm. to do a survey than to run a few focus groups. Interesting. So I can get at culture much more quickly yeah. if I'm talking to people in the organization in groups yeah. than if somebody comes in with a big load of survey material, maybe mm -hmm. even a, a whole stage of developing the items. Right. It's, it's a great technique, but it should be used for when the items really reflect the phenomenon that you're trying to study.